Welcome back. There was a question last time about how much heat we generate by transmitting through this bandpass filter. And so I have all three here and we're gonna go through and try out running some power through each of them and see what it does to the cores, how much it heats up. So the setup here is I have the ICOM IC7300 uh, going right into here and then I come out here into a Pulsar HF um, antenna tuner and I'm just using that again to monitor the peak wattage right here. Uh, I have it on bypass because I don't need to tune anything. I'm running the output into a 300 watt attenuator and after the 300 watt attenuator a 100 watt or was it 200 watt a homemade a dummy load so that is there to eat up the power that we're going to transmit so the goal here is well i said the goal <laughs> to monitor if we generate any heat um, how i'm going to transmit is uh, i'm running ft8 into the dummy load so i'm just going to call cq so we have a 50 percent duty cycle I'm gonna start off with uh, 50 watts on it and then probably if it hasn't heated up go ahead and up it to 100 watts um, I have here the heat gun that we can use to monitor the heat so I have it in Celsius right now so right around here is um, 24.5 Celsius or so Kind of the room temperature if you look here at the wall we have 24.8 let's look at the table there we also have 24.5 and right next to us is the fridge so you see actually it's a freezer so you see the coils that dissipate the heat on the walls right nicely here and so obviously that area will have a bit of higher temperature so let's go ahead and start that. I'm gonna turn on and off the video here just so it's a little bit shorter. So we've been running this for about seven minutes. That started after I was upping the power to 50%, uh, sorry, 50 watts. So it took a little bit time to adjust everything. But so we have run it for quite a while so the, right now the temperature doesn't look bad at all so if you look at the center core the center one is only 30 definitely the more warm core is the one right over here the first one that is 33 34 no it's off one sec okay we transmit again Yeah, the max 35 right now so it's not bad at all right now the second core is the third core is actually a little bit lower in temperature so those temperatures are not bad if you compare that to the temperature of the monitor we have there more than 40 on here so we good so far. Let me go ahead and up that to 100 watts and we'll see how that filter performs then. So I'm running here at full power. Now that is at 95 watts according to the HF Auto and 100 watts according to the ICOM IC7300. And we're right now at nine minutes so you can run that a few more minutes and see what the temperature is so definitely got warmer we have 40 degrees 43 degrees here the middle one is 33 degrees and the last core is 30 well it's dropping right now
Okay, let's measure that again. 30, 40 degrees, yep. Yeah. First core is 44 degrees. Forty-five degrees. So let's go ahead and run that for a little while and see the result here. Okay, so we ran this now for ten more minutes on hundred watts, and I've been seeing the temperature to go up to fifty-one degrees Celsius. 52 we have right here 53 okay so not too horrible so we, right now we are running FD8 running calling C cube so basically continuously running FD8 here that would be kind of a 50 percent duty duty cycle you can check what the standard on off transmission times are so that is the 7 megahertz 40 meter band pass filter so I'm gonna stop it go down and put it on the spectrum analyzer quickly while it's still warm just to see if um, it make any difference in the filtering curve and we're back here so here's the curve it's on a pretty wide range so it still looks the same as before you go right here is the 30 dp drop off at 10.4 megahertz up here we have 0.4 so I would say those filters are pretty much 0.5 dB loss on the band pass side so I think that pretty much looks the same as before again here's the inside of the filter we have the cores the wires Obviously a little bit warm to the touch, not too bad. So I mean this one performed as expected really. No complaints there. Again we only ran it with 100 watts here. It's rated for 200 watts, but in reality Nobody's gonna run it more than a hundred watts here on FD8. So I just started the 20 meter bandpass filter. So the temperature shouldn't be too high yet. I am went straight to 100 watts here transmitting. As mentioned, the surrounding temperature is 24 degrees Celsius here. So we measure 39, 40 degrees Celsius as we transmit. Again, it's on the input side. So let's run that for a little bit and see what happens. So we are at 11 minutes here and the temperature on this one is just the same as on the other one kind of goes up to 53 max it's on the first core 42 and this, the third core is the second warmest and the center core So again, no concerns here, we are running 100 watts FT8 
for now 12 minutes into this let's go ahead and stop this and run quickly down to the spectrum analyzer although i don't think there will be any difference let's do one more cycle before we head up so we're here we still have a pretty decent curve so 30 db right here at 9.5 megahertz up there we have there are we 14 megahertz 0 0.7 and 14.6 is 0.9 so not quite the 0.5 probably should be zooming in to get a better reading on that so again it hasn't changed too much I would say again we do have not the housing on it uh, one thing obviously once you put the cover on it has a little felt there so it will trap the heat slightly more it the aluminum does get warm to the touch and it already cooled down quite a bit so again that one performed pretty decent let's take a peek at the 50 meter and interestingly now the antenna exit had actually a higher temperature while it's transmitting let's wait for the next cycle here so the middle core obviously stays warmer retains the heat a bit better and then as we transmit it jumps over to the other core so that was 56 kernel found it kind of interesting so let's compare the front and the back one this time so it should jump to the back one 53 and I'm gonna move to the front one this Yeah, definitely interesting how it's on the antenna side not on the radio side that gets warmer on this one but again a little bit higher 56 so 54 55 right now the front one is also what we saw before so this one is just the back is slightly warmer than the front one well back front I mean the one on the antenna side slightly warmer than the one on the TX side but still not crazily different so let's go ahead and stop this we are in here 15 minutes running 100 watts so I just stop that now I'm gonna disconnect and run down to the spectrum analyzer Okay, so we are at the basement again. Um, right here, the 30 degrees is at 14.38, 30dB. On the top, we have 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So it does seem to go a little bit worse with temperature. The other 30, 30 dBs is at 30 megahertz. So yeah, it would be interesting to see as we cool down if that gets better. Let's go ahead and just zoom in here. Um, 
so let's go 21 megahertz and the end oops sure 20 megahertz the end is 22 megahertz let me go ahead and calibrate okay we're calibrated so on the markers we can see now that we are zoomed in we see it's just 0.5 something up there so I don't think the temperature really did match to the cores on the filtration on the filtering because the center core is definitely still warm on it the center core is the one that retains the heat the best it seems like while well, the front and the back one, or the side ones, get quicker, warmer, and cooler. Well, what does this mean? This means that these filters are doing what they are supposed to be doing. Uh, they are performing pretty decently. Uh, definitely don't have a problem with 100 watts on FT8, continuously running that. On sideband, you definitely have uh, much less heat accumulating there because just the transmission power uh, the transmission cycle is much lower so I definitely give them a thumbs up on what they are promising uh, one thing to keep in mind is we tested them with the case open in the case there is a little foam and obviously it's closed so the 50 degrees Celsius is a bit more enclosed so if you do continuously run FT8, maybe it's a good idea to uh, take a break now and then on transmitting. Otherwise, they are pretty much promising what they are advertising. So that's a thumbs up. On the filters in general, they are fairly wide filters. A lot of the band outside of the handband is still kind of included, specifically on the higher ones, the 14 and the 21 megahertz. So on the 15 bands, you really have much more than 15, the 15 meter band. So you could theoretically use it for some other applications there as well. Um, but they do give you 30 dB attenuation on the other handbands. So if you have multiple stations running, simultaneously and 30 dB is what you need to use both of them then those filters should work for you I still don't have any hard good solid uh, real-world experience with the filters and that would be nice to kind of gain and actually use it the other thing is to just have filters that are sharper would be nice and specifically for field days would be nice to have filters that are only for the CW digital band and filters that are up on the voice band so you could have actually you could use the same band for different modes but these filters are way way too gradually sloped you would need something much steeper I would love to get a hand on some filters sometime that are US made or other brands um, basically the more expensive filters and kind of see how they compare to these generic Chinese filters anyway thanks for watching bye bye